Hey guys, welcome back to Teal House Farm. Uh, today I am in the greenhouse getting ready to pick my lettuces and spinaches. First, I'm gonna apologize when you hear all that screaming outside. The girls are playing with water balloons and water guns and everybody wants to throw and shoot, but nobody wants to be the person getting shot at. So they are learning an important life lesson. <laughs> anyway, um, today I want to uh, pick all of my spinach and all of my lettuce because this week it is going to be almost 100 degrees for three days in a row. And I'm pretty sure that everything will just wilt and die away. Now, usually with spinach and lettuce, I just eat it as I want it. Um, I'll just come in here, pick some spinach, throw it in whatever I'm cooking or make a salad and it just continually grows new leaves and it lasts a really long time. But it's gonna be so unseasonably hot this week. And usually what happens by the time it hits middle of June and we have these really hot temperatures normally, the lettuce just dies and the spinach just dies. It's just too hot. But it's pretty early for it to be this hot. And so I'm a little disappointed. I'm gonna lose about a month of spinach regrowth, I think. Um, but I would rather harvest it all now and have it instead of hoping that it survives these super hot temperatures and then have none left. So I'm gonna show you basically how I'm gonna keep this as long as possible so I can spread it out, how I'm gonna preserve it and uh, keep it as fresh for as long as possible and just um, kind of how I've grown it this year in case you were interested in growing your own salad mixes yourself. So this is the inside of my DIY greenhouse. It's an old chicken, um, chicken tractor thingy then I put some plastic uh, construction or excuse me plastic I put some plastic painters tarps on top and it works just like a greenhouse it was super cheap and in here I grow everything you need for a salad so I have spinaches I have radishes those are the ones I have left I have uh, my plant starts I have a lettuce mix over there. You can see we've eaten a lot of that. Um, that's a spicy mustard and lettuce mix that a friend gave me randomly and it's delicious. And these are just green leaf lettuces. And then I started a late palette of green leaf lettuces and I don't think that they are going to survive this temperature, but hey. And then outside I have just a garden bed just tilled into the ground of spinach as well. Um, that has done really well. Now between um, planting spinach outside and inside. Now planting spinach outside versus inside the greenhouse, was there really a difference? There is a difference in upkeep. Weeds are just crazy. You can see even some of these pots inside the greenhouse had weeds in them, but not that bad. But outside in the garden bed, it's a lot more work. Um, but the spinach is healthy and green and, and looks a lot like the spinach in here. And they were all planted around the same time. I think the ones outside were planted a week later maybe. Um, so as far as if you want to grow spinach, should you grow it in a greenhouse or should you grow it outside in the ground in early spring? Your yields are going to be about the same. It's a little more work outside but you don't have to buy potting soil and you don't have to build a greenhouse. We'll say the benefit of a greenhouse is you can actually start it early. Um, typically I start them in February. This year because of any surgery I waited and didn't start until March but you could start your spinach and lettuces and radishes and carrots and things um, way in, you know, in February. And this is an unheated greenhouse and they would be, you could start eating them in March. And so that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, let's get to harvesting. My tools are pretty simple. I have a five gallon bucket for all the spinaches. And yes, this bucket's a little bit dirty. I've already been doing some garden work, but all the spinach is gonna get washed inside anyway. So this little bit of dirt doesn't bother me. I have a smaller bucket for the lettuces. I'm keeping them separate because lettuces I can't really preserve. I just need to eat them fresh so they'll be going in the fridge. And then I'm going to use some scissors for cutting the leaves off. I just find it's a little bit faster than picking them all by hand. Um, so... You see, I'm cutting the big leaves, cutting the stalks. Um, I am going to leave these very small inner leaves here. And the hope is if the weather does not kill them, they will grow into new leaves. And then I'll still have more spinach. But I have a feeling it's going to be so hot that these are not going to make it, which is why we are harvesting. Normally, I wouldn't harvest this many big leaves at once just to give the plant um, keep it healthier, give it more leaves for, you know, the photosynthesis, those important things. But because I don't think we're going to make it, we're just going to go ahead and harvest. So you see there's some leaves here on the ground that are a little bit more yellow. We can eat these. 
They're not bad. They're just not the freshest. Usually those are the ones that I might use in cooking. Instead of a salad, they can be a little bit more bitter. Um, they're the ones that are on their way out. spicy green mix and my loose leaf lettuce and again I only planted two pots of lettuce and green mix and I have been eating at least two or three salads a week for the last four or five weeks uh, so this is what was left so even two small pots um, and we're a family of eight like that's not very much area and it's a gift that keeps on giving so something to consider and then spinach, I have this five gallon bucket, about halfway full here um, of what was inside the greenhouse and outside. Same thing as before, we've been eating the spinach. I eat spinach every day actually, I use it in almost every meal because it's really good for you. So again, if you are judicious in how you cut your leaves and leave those center small leaves time to grow out, it's gonna be a gift that keeps giving for a very small space. Um, so I have two pots and I had one row in a small garden and this is what's left after I've been picking at it for over a month almost every day. So spinach and lettuces, um, it's really just they need a little bit of space and you get quite an investment back. So what's, what I'm going to do for both of them, I'm going to do the same thing for starters. I'm going to rinse them off just using a colander or a sieve and then I'm going to lay out a flour sack towel and dump them on top and just pat them dry real gently. You can use a paper towel too if you have paper towels. Um, flower sack towel, obviously just reusable. Saves you a little bit of money. Um, and then um, the lettuces, um, I'm going to just keep in the fridge. And the spinaches, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those. going to help me finish and I'll show you so the lettuces I just made a nice mixed salad and put it in this large bowl added some peppers and this uh, we'll eat through in, in a day um, but I'm going to use this bees wrap on top it keeps it nice and sealed it's kind of sticky feeling it seals it to the bowl so it'll stay fresh in the fridge for several several days probably even up to a week um, if we uh, didn't eat it all before then which we will for the spinach this is only about a quarter of the spinach Spinach is quite a lot of volume. So I went through and I pulled off all the extra long stems. There were some buds too where some of the spinaches had sprouted, some of the outside ones. I pulled those out and I rinsed it just like I did the lettuce. And now JJ is going to pack it in the silicone Ziploc baggies. You could also just use plastic Ziploc bags. We're going to squeeze as much air out as possible. I'm going to help you and put them in the freezer. You ready? I'm going to hold the bag and you stuff them. Now, most things that you freeze, you want to freeze separately on a cookie sheet and then put it in Ziploc bags because what's going to happen is it's going to stick together in the freezer into a clump. I don't do that with spinach, though. I'd rather just press and pack as much into a bag as possible because spinach becomes very fragile um, when it's frozen. And then I just break off however much I need for a recipe, just chunks of it in pieces. So I don't need the individual leaves. Um, Okay, this one's done. All right. This one is done, so we're going to try to seal it here with a little baby. Blue one. 
A big blue one. Awesome. All right. And before it's almost all the way sealed, we're just going to press out the air. Help prevent freezer burn. And then this is ready for the freezer. Let's do another one, JJ. A lot of spinach left over that I'm going to make uh, grilled salmon salads for lunch with. So, went a long way. Now, you can can spinach, but spinach, when you can it, you need, first of all, you need an incredible quantity. And also, I find with certain things, just a minute, Annie, I find with certain things, um, if you're not going to use a whole, like, pint when you use it every time. Sometimes it's kind of a waste of energy, I feel like, to can it. Miss P, you're okay. All right, so I freeze it so I can just use a little bit at a time instead of having to worry about using a whole jar at a time. So that's all for today. I'm gonna go get all the babies happy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.